Hey, what's happening, gamers? I'm K-Wing, and DC Rebirth has kicked things off with a bang. Now, uh, before I continue this video, it will contain full spoilers about DC Rebirth and what I think about it. This book, just so you know, was one of the last ones written by Jeff Johns, who's currently the head honcho over at DC Films. And this is one heck of a send-off, because it is everything that I ever loved about DC Comics. It reestablishes character connections and stories long forgotten, as well as bringing back fan-favorite heroes and teams dissolved because of the New 52. Now, one of the reasons why I was not really into the New 52 is because I couldn't relate to the characters' personalities or the characters themselves anymore. Origins for heroes and villains were ruined, like Mr. Freeze, to pull in new readers. Much of the 30-year history and important Batman and Superman stories were, like, plucked out of continuity. Nightwing became a super jerk. I really didn't like that they turned Oracle into Batgirl because of some microchip in her spine. That just really bothered me because, you know, Oracle was not just a throwaway character. She was a very very important character. And also, I felt like the world in itself became cynical and dark, which I'm going to say this right now. The only dark superhero or dark storylines that you need in the DC universe is Batman and his family, not the entire league, and especially not Nightwing or Superman. Superman is another reason why I couldn't stand the New 52's relaunch and I didn't really pay attention all that much to Superman's solo books, you know, in uh, the pre-Flashpoint universe. But I did enjoy the Batman Superman books. I thought they were very well done. They were fun stories, fun little mysteries. And it also showed the really deep friendship between Bruce and Clark. These totally different personalities that work so well together. We really didn't get that in the New 52. They both had the same kind of moody personality. Kind of like what you see in the Batman v Superman movies. You know, it also felt like Supes was kind of like an Injustice Superman. He wasn't a selfless hero. He was a selfish superhero, not the beacon of hope that Superman is supposed to be to inspire people to be better and to have hope. But enough about the past. It's time for a rebirth. Now, at the end of Titans Hunt, Nightwing and the Titans defeat an enemy known as Twister, who basically removed the Titans uh, existence from the world. And no one on Earth remembers who the Titans were. They defeat the bad guy, and then they're all sitting down for basically like swarma at a restaurant. And Grayson and Aqualad, a.k.a. Garth, or Tempest, they're talking about reforming the team for this era. Though something feels like it's missing, and Nightwing can't quite put his finger on it. There are nine Titans, but the Twister said there were ten. Then, just as he has that thought, thinking about who the lost Titan could be... A lightning bolt happens over by the docks with an end question mark that leads right into the DC Rebirth story. Now, originally, I thought that this character was going to be Starfire because the Red Hood and Outlaws flashback books showing Nightwing and Roy and Starfire doing some type of mission. And Star was apparently part of that. But actually, it turns out it is Wally and not imitation Wally West, the real McCoy. Though he's de-aged a bit, like, you know, Nightwing and all those other guys. Now, how he survived Convergence, they don't really say. But like with a classic Superman, he's back in the current DC Universe, and fans like me are going crazy! While he still retains all his powers, and then some, so he's still connected to the Speed Force, which he gained over the past three decades as the Flash. He was the most fun Flash to read, and the most relatable. The guy also, his personality was that of never let anything get him down. He had kids, he had a wonderful wife, and even his supervillains weren't as crazy as some of Batman's and some of the other DC Universe. He brought a lot of life into the DC Universe, and then he just disappeared. That optimism was just gone. Barry tried to be a very optimist hero. I remember reading uh, some of his New 52 stuff. But it wasn't as good as, like, the Rebirth and Flashpoint stuff. Like, Barry, just to me, I don't know. He just, everybody became, like, a generic superhero. It, you know, it felt like Marvel stories, which I don't like. And it, it's nothing against Marvel personally. I just, I'm not into hipster, emo, 
storylines and gimmicks that change like all the time. I really enjoyed pre-52 when we had Dick Grayson, you know, become his own Batman, the dynamic between a grumpy Robin and a happy Batman, you know, Wally West working with his kids, uh, Superman and Lois Lane's marriage. There was a lot of things going on that wasn't super, super dark, you know, aside from the Blackest Night zombie thing. But anyway, back to Rebirth. So the narrator for the story is Wally West, and he's basically explaining to the reader the past and the present, and something is amiss. He's constantly telling the um, reader about how the New 52 is actually the DC universe of old, though it's very, very different. Something or someone has stolen 10 years away from the world, severed relationships, broken up marriages, and lessons learned by our heroes in the past never happened. That one sentence by Wally West has just repaired millions of fans' issues with the New 52's lack of continuity, relationships, and famous stories from the DC Universe of old. It also means all of these events that shaped your favorite heroes did in fact happen again. But like with the Titans Hunt arc, they've all been forgotten or just like not allowed to happen. But due to Wally's reappearance, characters are starting to remember things and the world around them is being transformed. So the comic starts with Wally West explaining Flashpoint and about what Barry did and how the universe changed. If you didn't know what Flashpoint is, Barry went back in time to try to save his mom and he created the worst possible universe ever because he didn't become the Flash. Bruce Wayne was killed instead of his parents, making his mom like the most evil Joker in existence. Aquaman and Wonder Woman went to war, basically destroying half the world. And so many DC heroes and villains ended up killed. So it was just like the worst possible um, mirror image of what the DC universe could be. And it was Barry's fault. And the universe was changed because of that. Uh, although Barry did bring back the letter that uh, Thomas Wayne wanted to give his son Bruce to tell him he's proud of him and stuff like that. And in the New 52, this letter is always displayed in the Batcave. But uh, anyway, Wally, um, after surviving Convergence... And Convergence, basically all the worlds, after they successfully defeated the bad guy, they kind of merged into one. In the pre-52 universe, the ghost characters appeared above the uh, new 52 to kind of be like its spiritual successor or whatever. But what was so great about Convergence is all those storylines were finally finished. Nightwing and Batgirl or Oracle finally got married. Spoiler, and Tim Drake kind of like uh, finished their... You know, will they, won't they? And they got back together. Um, Lois had a baby, which is something that, you know, she always had miscarriages in the other DC universe. So there was a lot of things going forward that changed. And DC even said, well, we're not really done with the Convergence characters just yet. Based on how well the sales were, we're going to keep bringing these characters back and forth and maybe, you know, do what we do with like Earth Society or whatever, you know, which they didn't. But they did do the Lois and Clark books where they brought uh, pre-52 Superman into the new 52 universe, but it was different. And those Superman books really, really stand out compared to new 52 Superman's adventures with Wonder Woman himself and Kara and all this other stuff. So if you really want good Superman books to read, I challenge you to read Lois and Clark. OK, so I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, basically, Rebirth has Wally West um, traveling through the Speed Force and trying to reestablish his connection with the world. He wants someone to be able to remember him. His first step is actually to go to Batman, whom is able to figure out everything, even though he's a human. So Bruce is studying in the Batcave about the Joker, uh, things he learned during the Justice League War with Darkseid when he asked um, the Chair of Knowledge or whatever, who the Joker really is. He wanted to know the name of the Joker because he had all this infinite power and he was trying to test it. And basically what the chair told him is three. And Batman's like, no, that's impossible. So at the end of the Justice League uh, Dark Side War, Hal Jordan and Batman are kind of like sitting around and Batman is being obsessive about the Joker. And, you know, Hal's like, so what did the chair tell you? And the chair told him three Jokers, which in reality means three different people have been the Joker or they're saying that there are three Jokers currently alive in the DC multiverse. I don't really understand what DC's going to do with that going forward. I mean, that kind of blew my mind to see the killing joke or 80s and uh, 2000s 
uh, Joker, like right in the mix. And then you had the crazy new 52 Joker that cut off his face and all this other stuff, you know. So, mm, whatever. I, I mean, I personally feel that Joker needs to remain a mystery because that's part of his character. By doing this, there's three other Jokers running around. You know, that, mm, I don't know, that, that, that kind of bothers me. But um, anyway, Wally is coming into the Batcave and Bruce feels like something is amiss. You know, he's brooding over the whole Joker thing, but all of a sudden, like a bolt of lightning strikes inside the Batcave. And for the first time since 2011, we see, not counting Convergence, we see Wally like reaching out to Batman, kind of like the Batman v Superman thing. And Bruce is just blown away like, who are you? You know, and Wally's just like, you need to listen to me. It all started with your father, the letter. And, you know, Batman's just like freaking out. But even though he doesn't know who this character is, one of the things I always appreciated about the um, past DC Universe is Batman's empathy for people, like how he feels for people. Even though he has no idea who this person is, like he still wants to reach out to help him. And because Wally can't create a connection with um, this Batman... It's almost like he vaporizes right in front of Bruce, which horrifies him. But just before Wally leaves the Batcave, all these old memories start like flooding into Batman's head. And he's just like, because he's seeing all these images from, you know, the pre-52 universe, like pre-Flashpoint. And this stuff, again, is like terraforming their world. You know, it, it's revitalizing characters that were dead or just forgotten. And everything is just like changing. You know, like a master sculptor is just messing with everything. So a good chunk of the story is definitely Wally West trying to find his tether to this new DC universe and to exist again. Um, No one can be his lightning rod. And like you saw in the Flash series, you know, Barry said Iris is his lightning rod. Wally has to have a lightning rod, too. And what's happening, because he's been in the Speed Force so long... It's starting to break down his body and absorb him into the Speed Force. Now, his own wife, Linda Park, who's much, much younger now, she's still a reporter, I believe. She doesn't even remember him, and it nearly crushes Wally. In fact, he got so upset that he was crying out to God to not let this happen, because no matter what's happened in his life and all the Flash stories, Linda has always been there for him, and she's always been that lightning rod that brought him back. He then spirals out of control inside the Speed Force and it's like going basically like a pinball like all over the place to his uh, friends at the Titans and even his best friend Nightwing has no idea who he is or his past villains. He visits like Captain Boomerang and Captain Cold. Nobody remembers him. And basically all hope seems lost to Wally until Barry remembers his favorite protege just before Wally is like absorbed into the Speed Force. And just like that, Wally West is back. When I was reading this issue, the emotions that I felt, it really, to me, felt like my heart was just going to burst. I mean, Wally West was one of my favorite characters, and to see him almost die, like, right in front of me, I mean, that was just insane. And the way that he was going about it, he was so calm, he was so Wally about it, you know? And then when Wally is back, like, in the flesh, he's like, Barry, we've got work to do. And he informs him about all the stuff that happened pre-Flashpoint. What the big problem with the New 52 was, and what Wally explains to people, is the different relationships have been broken apart, or they never happened. Green Arrow and Black Canary aren't married. Aquaman and Miria aren't married, even though their engagement in this issue kind of pulls Wally back into the fold. New heroes and old heroes alike are coming back, like Ted Kord, the original Blue Beetle. Uh, Ray Palmer, the Atom, who's actually lost in the microverse. And he needs Ryan, the second Atom, to go and find him. So those are going to be fun little stories. The Justice Society of America actually happened in this universe because it is the old DC universe. I know it gets confusing. But basically, a lot of them are living in nursing homes now. And people think they're crazy. And most importantly... The future's changed because the Legion of Superheroes are back and they're searching for Clark Kent. Wally continues to warn Barry that also something is amiss in this world, 
even though characters are coming back and things are being reestablished, kind of, something is controlling the DC universe, making them weaker, stealing their time that should have already passed. And who's watching the DC universe? Apparently, it's Alan Moore's The Watchmen, which that is what everybody is talking about, DC Rebirth. Not Wally West, the possibility that Dr. Manhattan has created the New 52 after Flashpoint. Because if you remember the Watchmen comics, at the very end of all that stuff, Dr. Manhattan goes to Mars, and he's like this super OP, kind of like godlike character. And he's just up there talking to himself, saying how you know he wants to create life or something like that. So everybody's saying, well, because of this, Dr. Manhattan creates the New 52. There's no evidence of that yet. The epilogue at the end, you kind of get a sense that something happened. But I really think that Dr. Manhattan is going to be kind of like the big bad. Like, you know, he's he's going to do something to the uh, DC universe. But um, when Batman finds a comedian's badge in the Batcave, I lost it. I was like, what does this mean? Because he's still studying stuff about the Joker. Are they saying that the comedian is actually one of the Jokers? Which, that would be insane. But all these questions that we currently have... They're not going to be answered for the next two years in the DC Universe, and I'm pretty pumped. I've already talked about the Rebirth books coming this summer that I'm really interested in. Now there's just a whole lot more that uh, I want to read, but I'm not going to really go over that because I've done it in a previous video. But before I go, I wanted to talk to you about Superman in Rebirth and how the classic pre-Flashpoint Superman came back into the DC Universe. It all started with Convergence, which I've already kind of explained to you what that was in previous videos. But somehow, because he is so OP, pre-Flashpoint Superman and his wife and their baby survive the Cataclysm and end up bouncing all over the multiverse trying to make their way back to the mainstream DC Universe. And they go through all kinds of crazy adventures. But my favorite Superman is back in the DC Universe. And I really challenge you guys to read the Lois and Clark books because they're so well done. Now, as he's in the DC universe, things are changing again. There's already a Clark Kent, so he can't reveal himself as Superman and, you know, go through all those stuff again. There's a new Superman who's very selfish and emo and jerkish and whatever. So Clark goes by the name of Mr. White and he basically becomes like a farmer and he raises his son and Lois, uh, you know, while Clark is off, you know, saving people because that's what Superman does. He saves people, although he does it like very nonchalant and very ninja like because he doesn't want anybody to track them down. And whenever Clark does these amazing things, his wife writes about it and she becomes like this, you know, really famous author on this world, like challenging the likes of her counterpart, Lois Lane. Though some people actually swear that they see a flying man helping them out, but then, you know, their friends just tell them, oh, you're just in shock. It was really Superman or the Justice League that saved you. It was one of the, you know, metahumans. So, I mean, you know, that that's how Superman kind of hides his deeds. And Jonathan grows up pretty normal until Inner Gang gets involved. And then Clark Kent and his wife are like moving all over the place to keep their son safe because his powers... While they're starting to develop, they're not really at the point where their son is invincible just yet. And now we get back into the New 52. So how does pre-Flashpoint Superman become Superman again? Well, you have to get rid of the old guy. So New 52 Superman, how they write it is he's dying due to kryptonite poisoning from the stuff with Vandal Savage, the solar flare event where he got that new power. It's kind of breaking down his body from the inside. And, of course, his battle on Apocalypse, which changed his gene structure or whatever. So all these three things are combined into why Superman is now terminal. So he spends the past Superman issues uh, and team-up books explaining, you know, why he's dying. There's no cure. He's very upset about it. But he's going to use his time wisely no matter what. So he says goodbye to his friends and family and then in the last couple issues, he runs into a new metahuman that has all his powers and then some. And this guy is trying to destroy everything that Superman created using his name. So in his last days, this Superman actually started to remind me of the selfless Superman that I respected. Though he is dying, this Superman does his best to protect everyone in his life and the world and find his cousin Kara to carry on 
you know, his new mission in life. Like he's just going to be that Superman that everybody wants him to be. You know, he's he's going to be completely different. Though Supergirl is missing in this uh, comic, it takes uh, Batman to find her. So Clark goes to see Bruce, tells him about his illness, kind of joking about it. And Bruce gets really mad. And, you know, because this is his best friend in this universe. They're they're the brooding buddies. And he decides, you know what? I'm going to help you find Kara anyway because the world needs a super person. So they find where uh, Kara's being held and Superman saves her. And then he tells her the truth and gives her the keys to the Fortress of Solitude. Wonder Woman shows up. You know, the girlfriend is not happy to learn from Batman, the ex, that, you know, her boyfriend is dying. And then the Trinity do these kind of weird adventures. Uh, I believe they go to China to do something to stop like a Superman cloning plant or something like that, which I really believe in rebirth. The um, Superman that flew away is going to be the Chinese Superman because China is going to have their own Superman now who has the DNA of Clark Kent. So he's kind of like um, Superboy in the uh, pre-52 universe. You know that like um, tube Superman. So anyway, things go really, really crazy in the last days of Superman, but eventually they return to the States and they find the imposter killing people. And no, this guy is not Man of Steel Superman, so we got to give that guy a break, but he's pretty crazy and a little bit more emo, even more emo than New 52 Supes. So this imposter Superman actually reminds me of the Eradicator. Do you guys remember that guy from Reign of the Supermen? You know, the guy who really thought he was Superman, but he had like flame powers. And he kind of was like murder Superman. Anyway, Evil Soup shows up and he goes to Lois's house because he still has a thing for Lois, even though he technically loves Wonder Woman. It always comes full circle around Lois Lane. So the other Man of Steel, you know, the real Superman with the beard, he and his son Jonathan are sitting down for dinner, which is breakfast, which is amazing. And then crazy evil Eradicator Superman shows up and he's like, I love flapjacks. And then he attacks Mr. White, and the Trinity arrives to kind of help out this guy. But before things get out of hand and you think that Mr. White is going to help the New 52 Trinity, like in the blink of an eye that just like confounds uh, New 52 Superman, Clark just flies away, picks up his wife and son at like Goku speeds, and the Justice League is just like stunned, and that Superman is gone, untraceable. And the Eradicator Superman is just kind of like, ah, no worry, I'll I'll be able to track that guy, no problem, because we have this connection, I can find him no matter where he goes. So then, as the battle begins against the Imposter or Eradicator wannabe, you know, he attacks Lois Lane for betraying him because this guy's insane, and Superman's like, you have to get Lois out of here! And he takes, like, a bullet for her, basically, so he makes himself even weaker, And Wonder Woman and Cal then attack the flame guy. The rest of the league, just like old Superman's fight against Doomsday, you know, back in the 90s, they're off playing like superhero bingo or something because nobody comes to help. It's just Batman, Wonder Woman, and New 52 Superman fighting like this Eradicator guy. So the fight basically ends in a death battle with no winners. But you'll have to read the rest of the story yourself in order to see what happens to Superman and what he does to save the world. So by the time of Rebirth now, New 52 Superman is dead. Everybody's attending his funeral, just like the death of Superman. You know, all the heroes and villains are coming together to remember the man who saved the world, basically. So then some strange uh, cloaked figure appears in front of Mr. White, or the real Superman, and says that the dead Superman actually isn't the real deal like you, Clark, and then vanishes. And basically, in order to figure out what's happening with Superman and this, you know, kind of like New 52 Superman, who he was, you're going to have to read the Superman Rebirth issues to kind of get that full, you know, story and connect all the puzzle pieces. Now, what I really liked about the Rebirth book is that it's a great send-off to Jeff Johns and also a great reintroduction to the DC Universe that people liked. Um, This isn't really a reboot. It's more like a reset of the DC Universe. So think of it kind of like what DC did with um, Zero Hour in the 90s, that type of thing. It's a very soft reboot while reestablishing those old stories, but just resetting things just a little bit. I really, really believe 
that Rebirth is going to attract a lot of old timers like myself who enjoy storytelling and these kind of like very um, expressive characters and, you know, stories about family. Like with Superman, we're going to see stuff about Superman having a son and his son getting superpowers. And then Damien, who hasn't really had a best friend in the superhero community, he's going to have a book with um, Superman's son and they're going to do team up stories. You know, where they're both really about 13 years old. So that's going to be interesting. There's a lot of changes that are happening to the DC universe that it's not going to be like what we're seeing in the cinematic universe. It's not going to be super moody anymore. Batman's stories are going to be dark, but he's going to be working with his sidekicks again, like we saw in the 90s. The 80s was a very dark time for comic books, but the 90s was kind of like an extreme, not necessarily super dark because Batman didn't die in the 90s he had his back broken and there was a lot of really interesting stories that were told through his sidekick who got his own book the Robin series and Nightwing got his own comic book series in the 90s and these characters were like very fun characters to read Wally West books were really fun to read and it wasn't just this gloomy dark stuff so um, Rebirth is a contrast to what you see on television and what you see with the movies. It's not going to be super campy. I mean, there's still going to be like tragic events that happen during these crossovers, but it feels like the heart of the DC universe is back. This feels completely different than the direction Marvel's been going in the 2000s. Like with the new 52, you could kind of get that Marvel feel to it. So if you like those type of books, the new 52 was for you. If you really, really enjoyed um, the contrast of the DC universe and the characters and your favorite heroes and, you know, really rich storytelling, then DC Rebirth is going to bring you back to DC Comics, whether you're a new reader or you're an old reader that kind of left. The emo crap for the past five years or six years, probably, yeah, almost six years, it's done. And I really can't believe I'm saying this, but thanks to rebirth and the last days of superman i will be reading dc heroes other than nightwing and batman again which is not something i've done since the reign of the superman arc and uh, going into the young justice books like back in the 90s i am actually excited to read superman stories again i know the batman guy anticipating the next superman comic no the world is not ending but probably best to look outside just to be on the safe side. If you see hail the size of basketballs, then you know something's not right. Anyway, that's it. That's all. Um, if you enjoyed DC Rebirth and you're going to start reading DC again, let me know. I really want to hear what your experience with this book was. If it really transformed uh, your viewpoint of the uh, DC universe and if you're excited about it again. And I really also want to know um, what character are you the most looking forward to seeing in the DC universe again. Let me know in the comments section below. Have a great rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen. I know I talked for a very, very long time, but uh, I had a lot to get off my chest. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and bat punch that like button. If you didn't like it, well, tell me why. I'm curious. Until we meet again, God bless and happy reading. <laughs> Later, gamers. Thank <laughs> you.